Let's see. Oh, I think I'm on. Perfect. All right. Hey, welcome to my little paintbrush. I'm so excited to paint with you today as we are getting ready for Easter. This is the perfect painting. It has all the colors, the pastels, the bunny feet, bunny tail, all the things we love, right? And it's one of my favorites because it has all these colors. You can mix and match. So you don't have to follow along with me and paint the exact colors I'm painting. You can switch it up and paint a different color bunny, different feet, put the egg colors in different areas. I love to see what you guys come up with. So get creative, have a good time. Remember, we all paint differently. We all see color differently. And so that is what makes painting such a unique thing, right? If all of us painted the same, this world would be pretty boring. So enjoy yourself. Remember, you can pause this video if I'm going faster than you or slower than you, you can go at your own pace. That's the beauty of painting at home. So take your time, enjoy the process, and let's get started. I have a couple of brushes today. If I didn't mention, I miss Sarah. I love to paint. And so this is going to be a good time. I have a large flat and a medium round. So it's pretty small, but I also have a detail that's even smaller for small lines. Okay. These will be my brushes. You use what works for you. I also have a jar or two of water and I like to start off by first putting my brush in water just to get the bristles wet because acrylic paint needs water. Okay. And then I just gently tap it off. We're going to start with the fence, warm up, get those paint muscles going and thinking, right? Because, you know, it takes us a minute, it takes us a minute to get in the zone. And the fence is the perfect way because we're going to start with some floating and brush strokes up and down. Imagine you're actually painting a fence and you're going to use your brush. Whoop, flicked myself with water <laughs> going up and down. Pardon me if I'm not finding my words. I just finished teaching the most adorable little class and Yes, little people, my words are gone, but I'm gonna do my best, so here we go. Let's switch this camera so it's up close for you. So you can see what I'm doing. Okay, we're gonna start our fence here. First things first. Um, as you can see, I have everything traced on my canvas just the way I want it, but I don't have the fence because we're leaving that up to you. You get to be creative. I'm gonna take my plate here and to do the fence, we wanna dip half of our flat brush. So turn it sideways, okay? Dip half of it in white, then flip it around and dip the other corner in brown. So I have brown on one corner, white on the other, just like that. I'm gonna face the brown on the outside of my fence with the white facing my bunny. I'm gonna brush up and down and you can kinda of see how that brown fades. That is what we want. We want it to fade into our fence, right? Okay, now every time I do this, it's a little different because you just never know. You never know what you're gonna get here. Okay, so have some fun, give yourself a little grace. We are just having a good time. And we're all going to have a different fence in the end, right? Okay, now I'm gonna flip my brush around and focus my brush now on one uh, where I want that fence board to end or separate, okay? So I just kind of flip it around there and create a darker shade there. You can just keep going the way you are and not worry about that, but I like to give myself an idea of where I want my fence to kind of be broken up, okay? Um, and I'm gonna keep brushing here under my bunny feet, just filling that in. And that's it, that's all we're gonna do. Now I'm gonna keep going over here and again, I'm going to create a line just in the center by my bunny butt here. Okay, and I'm gonna fill in that space as well. Just brushing up and down. Don't worry if you accidentally paint a little bit into your bunny butt and the fence. It comes into our circle a little bit. It's not a big deal. Okay, I'm gonna paint straight down the middle here with the brown facing the middle, okay? And again, just fill in that space a little bit, brush up and down, let it fade out. Every time I load my brush, I load it with the brown on that corner, 
and I keep that going. Now I'm going to come back up here actually and make sure I create my next line and then fill it in. You can create the lines later. You don't have to do it right now. That's just, you can paint the whole thing brown and then put those lines in. I've done it both ways and they work great. They're just different, different ways of doing it. And now we'll do the other edge the same way we started out. Okay, so reach over and paint straight down. Again, letting it fade out with the brown facing the outside. So that's where the darkest shade is that helps to bring attention to our bunny. But remember, this um, fence is not the star of the show here, right? We have to remember that. It's going to get lost behind the bunny and also the eggs, right? So it's okay to just go quickly and fill it in here. Don't worry too much about perfection. But remember, you can pause the video if I'm going too fast for you. That's perfectly okay to pause it and take a minute to catch up if I'm going too quick. Okay, I'm going to try and line up here the lines and just fill this space in under my bunny. Keep brushing up and down, trying to keep my fence line going up and down as if you are painting your fence. Same thing. All right, finish painting this in. Now if you feel like, you know, I have too much brown, I don't like it, I want more white, that's okay. All you need to do is put a little more white on that brush, and go right back over it, no big deal. It's totally doable. Looking good. We're just giving it that rustic look. Now I'm going to stop here. Let that dry for a minute. Rinse my brush out. Now remember, you can pause this if you need to. If you need to take just a minute and pause, go for it. I'm going to take a detail brush now and show you how to do the um, cracks in our planks, our wood planks here. I'm going to take this little detail brush and dip it in some brown. I'm going to come up here to the top. Now, I like to get messy when I'm creating my fence, okay, so I don't have those perfect lines. I like to create a spot with the brown and then pull down with my finger. So I put a little spot at the top and then I pull down with my finger. And that takes away that perfect line. I, I like the rustic look it gives. So here I'm just going to put a little dot and then pull away with my finger. Pull away, little dot, pull away, just like that. And then you can come over and add any little streaks you want to in your fence or don't if you like it just the way it is, right? It's up to you. Now we're going to do the same thing with some black. So I'm going to rinse my brush here and I'm going to take a little bit of black on the point of my detail brush and do the same thing. I'm going to do a little dot at the top of the fence. Then I'm just going to pull down, just like that. You can rub it in a little bit, or you can just brush straight down if you don't want to get that messy like me. You know, we have artists that prefer not to. And you can just paint a line instead of creating that smeary look. You can do more of a straight line. Totally a preference thing. Okay, I'm going to pull down again. Here we go, and pull down. So now I have my fence separated. How cute is that? Okay. So now we're gonna go ahead, figure out what color we want our bunny butt to be. Let our fence take a minute to dry. Let's see, I am going to paint a turquoise bunny. So I'm going to float my bunny with turquoise. You'll notice that I do my edges around my bunny here. Okay, so we just kind of work our way around it instead of filling it in. If you want to fill in your bunny completely with a color, 
That's adorable, and we've seen that a lot. So go for it. Otherwise, you can follow along with me. I'm going to float my edges with turquoise. So I'm taking white on one corner of my brush and putting turquoise on the other corner. You can also take a detail brush here, and you can outline. So instead of floating, you could go around and outline your bunny, just like that with a detail brush. Okay, I like to float, it's my thing, but it's not everybody's thing. So if you feel like you would rather not float, I'll show you the difference. Here's floating, okay? It just has a little bit of a different fade to it. Okay, just like that. So I'm gonna take that turquoise on one corner, white on the other, okay? And I'm gonna start up at the top corner and brush around. Lay your brush flat. Try to use all the bristles when you're floating so it'll fade. Okay, we don't wanna use the tippy point of our brush necessarily. We just wanna float it around. Okay, and all of us are gonna float different. No two people float the same. It's just, well, maybe Cammy and I. <laughs> <laughs> but we're kind of the same person, my sister and I. So we may float the same, but most people don't. Most people, it's very different. So be nice to yourself as you do this. I'm going to now come down and paint the bottom part, the bunny's belly here. And just float back and forth. Okay. Then we're going to do our feet. And again, I'm just following the outside edge all the way around. The trick with floating too is if your bristles aren't wet enough and your paint is too tight, it's not going to float for you very easily. So just make sure your consistency is good and you have enough water on your brush that you can float the paint around fairly easily. Okay, we're gonna do our toes here all the way around. And it definitely is a trial and error thing. It takes a little bit of time to figure out. So be nice to yourself as you were painting this. It's all about just learning and experiencing and having a good time, right? Okay. Even when I do it, it's different every time. You just don't know what your paintbrush is going to give you. Sometimes it decides for us. It's kind of the joy of creating. We accept what comes as we go. And love it. Okay, so we got one foot floated all the way around. I'm going to do my other one. There we go. Reload your brush and then start again. Another trick is to try not to pick up your brush as you go around. But again, that takes some practice. So be patient with yourself as you figure that out. Remember to lay your brush flat. Make sure you have enough water to float those corners and that paint straight down. You wanna get as far as you can down your canvas without picking up your brush. My paint has dried a lot sitting here in this light, so I tend to have to use a lot of water. You probably won't need to use as much as me. There we go. Okay. Finish up the toes. Love it. Super cute. Okay, now you can use less turquoise. I'm using a lot so you can see it really well, but obviously you don't have to have it as thick as mine. Um, I'm gonna go around my tail next and when you are creating this tail, imagine you're painting a rainbow all the way around. So paint that rainbow. That kind of separates all the fun um, curls in this tail. The fur makes it a little more fluffy. So I like to curve my brush around and then pick, stop, pick up my brush, curve it around. It helps to separate our little 
um, curls here. Go all the way around. There we go. Such a cute little tail. And then I'm going to add a few little ruffles here in the center. I just like to create one, two, three rainbows here. And you can do whatever you want. That's just how I'm going to separate them. But you don't have to do it that way. And then I have one, two here. Just gives it a little bit of fluff, you know. And I think it's super cute. Okay. We got those done, looking really good. Love it. Now, before you rinse your brush, I want you to go ahead and paint one of your eggs, okay? So I'm gonna come down here and pick one of my eggs that I wanna paint, fill it in, just like that. I'm gonna pick this one, but you can obviously do whichever one you're feeling at the moment. Fill that in with that turquoise or whatever color you painted your bunny. You can obviously switch that up. Okay, now I'm going to rinse my brush. Clean it out. And this is where you need to decide what color you want the bottom of your feet to be. Okay, mine is pink. Looks like that. Got pink. Pink feet on the bottom. You can obviously pick any color you want. So I have my pink here and I'm gonna grab some white and mix it with my pink. We always wanna add a little bit of white to our color. It just helps our acrylic paint go on so much better. Okay, I'm still using my large flat brush. I haven't changed brushes yet. I'm gonna try not to pick up my brush as I go around those corners to give it a nice smooth edge. But boy, that's tricky. There it is. Okay. Man. There we go. Come around. Create that oval shape. Help it meet up. There we go. Okay. And then we're going to go over to the other foot. Same thing. Just going to fill it in there. all the way around. I like to use my flat brush. It just helps with filling it in and smoothing it out rather than using a detail. But you do you, right? Got to do what works for you. Now once I get this done, before I do my toes, I'm actually going to paint two of my eggs, okay? So I'm gonna paint two eggs here before moving on. Whoop, sorry about that. Okay, so I have this middle egg. I'm gonna go ahead and paint that in. Fill it in. And you can place this color anywhere that works for you. This is just what works for me. I like putting the pink right in the middle. It's like creating a rainbow shape here. Now you can tuck it around that blue egg or you can go right in front of it. I've done it both ways. So cute. And then I have one more over here in the corner just popping in. Okay, so we're gonna fill that in too. Cute. Love it. All right. Okay, let's let that dry for a minute. And let's move on to our toes on our bunny. I'm gonna get a small detail brush this time. Just a little one here. I'm going to put some more of my bunny color on there. Same color as what I painted the bottom of my feet. And I like to create my circle first and then fill it in. That way I have my shape already done. And it's a smooth edge. There we go. Let's do this one and then fill it in. 
just makes it a little easier. Here we go. Perfect. One more here. And fill it in. It's already looking pretty cute here. All right. Love it. I'm going to turn on. Okay. I'm going to go over to this side, do the same thing. I'm just going to do my circle first. Fill it in. Any color you chose. Tonight was really cute. We had all kinds of colors in the class. So many bunnies. They were adorable. Mixed and matched colors all over the room. All right. Fill that one in. One more here. All the way around. Circles are a little tricky. That's why I like to outline them first. As if I'm painting with a marker. Clean up those edges before I fill it in because they really are kind of tricky to do. You can go back and do another layer if you need it. I think mine's pretty good. Yep, perfect. All right, I rinse out that brush. Now while our bunny is drying, we are actually going to paint our other eggs here. Okay, so let's let that bunny dry. Now let's finish up our eggs. Oh, I smeared a little bit. A pink in my egg, but that's okay. All right. We're going to cover it with grass. So I'm going to paint my back, my egg there in the back yellow. I like to start with this one first in case I accidentally paint inside my other eggs. I can easily cover it up. And I'm going to add some white to my yellow. Always add white. Mix it a little bit here. You can come right up here and let's just paint in that yellow egg. We have to focus, right, to make sure we can get all the way around that egg. They're surpri they surprisingly are a little tricky. Okay. Once that egg is done, I'm going to rinse my brush again. Okay, and we're going to get purple, where I am. I'm going to paint my last egg purple, and again, I'm adding some white. Okay, make sure we add that white to it, especially with our purple. It's very transparent. See right through it unless you add. Okay, and that one is slightly behind it, so I'm just going to come around. Come around the top. There it is. Fill that in. Now we also like to wrap our edges. We like to paint the sides of our canvas. So if you want to wrap those eggs around. Didn't mention that with the fence, but if you want to go back and add brown on each side and the top, it looks so nice once it's finished. Okay. All right, love this. Looks so good. Now we're going to let our eggs dry for a minute. And we're going to go ahead and paint the hole in our fence above the bunny. And we're doing it black. So I'm going to grab my detail brush. Let's put some black on our brush. Just like that. Okay. And we're going to come up here and just, first of all, follow the outline of our circle. Really think you'll be happier if you do that first. Makes the rest of it pretty easy. don't want to smear all of our hard work so we kind of have to slow down just a little bit there it is got that side and you see how I'm coming all the way around the bunny there finishing off the circle all the way around and here I'll just connect the top awesome once that's done then we will Outline the inside of our bunny where it's just popping through that hole right there. 
and do the other side here. Go. Whoops, I smeared my foot a little bit. I can fix that later. Okay. Then I'll just come up and I'll paint around the tail. Fill it in with our little brush. There we go. All the way around. Just like that. Okay, and then, oh darn, got a little black, that's what happens here. All right, and then I'm going to just fill it in very gently with black. Make sure we have to slow down because we always tell our artists, black is so strong it will take over. It just covers up everything. So we have to slow down. Take our time filling it in. There go. Get that other side. Almost there. As perfectionists, you know, this can be tricky for us. I think we got it though. Awesome. The little things we can touch up later. Don't worry about it now. Not a big deal. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead, finish up our outlining while we have black on our brush. I like to start at the top so I don't smear anything as I'm working my way down. So I'm going to outline my little tail here. Just go around. Add a little bit of a shadow. There we go. It acts as a shadow for us. It really helps our tail pop a little bit. And then I'm going to outline some of my foot. And come around here. When you're outlining, you really want to try and go as far as you can before your brush runs out of paint. That gives us the best result. And it's hard to do, but if you have enough water in your black and it's thin enough, it should go pretty good for you. So just outline our toes. It really does add something though to our paintings. Just let it fade out here, just like that. Love it. Okay, we're going to go ahead to the other foot now. I'm going to have to fix some of my smears and I'll show you guys how to do that. Usually I'll hold my canvas at this point so that I'm not putting my wrist in it. But with it on the easel here, can't do that. Go all the way around. up our toes. There we go. And then let it fade out as we come up. Fade away on us. Perfect. Now we'll just finish the belly here. Okay. It's looking good already. Okay, we're going to just add a little bit of an outline here, a smile shape. Inside our foot there. And then with each of our little circles, I just add a little bit of a smile. Just gives it a little bit of dimension. These little details aren't necessary, but they do add a little something to our painting. I'm going to add a little smile to the bottom of that one. And then we'll do the same here with our little toes. Perfect. 
Perfect. The little smile. I love it. Okay, we're getting close, guys. So now what we're going to do is just add a little bit of an outline to our eggs. Help some pop. And I don't outline all of them. Just some. Just to give it a little bit of extra something. Helps it stand out from the grass and it helps separate our eggs from each other. A little there. And then we'll do our purple one here. Just like that. Perfect. I think we got it all. So I'm going to rinse my brush. Really good here. And then this is where you can kind of fix some things. I just put some white on my brush. I'm just going to cover up anything I may have accidentally painted without meaning to. White is a best friend here. A painter's best friend. It just covers things right up for us pretty easily. There we go. Okay. I think we're ready to finish up some little highlighting here. Now one, oh, did not mean to do that. <laughs> Grab the wrong color. I'm going to rinse my brush out. Try that again. Okay, so we've got to just add a little shadow. I'm going to show you guys how to add a shadow to the painting around our eggs. And I'll show you what we're going to do. There we go. Easy fix. Okay. So for a shadow, you can kind of see how we add a shadow here under the feet and under the belly and around the eggs. That gives our painting some dimension so it doesn't look so flat. Okay, so we're just going to add a shadow, but first you need to make sure that your um, black is dry. Okay, because we just don't want to smear it. I'm just fixing a little spot up here, but we don't want to smear our black. But I am going to take a flat brush. Now you can outline this if you prefer to outline it or you can float it with me but I'm going to take my flat brush and float by putting a little bit of brown on the corner just like that okay and I'm just going to follow just below my belly my bunny's belly here and float back and forth just like that and take that color down around the toe Okay, you want to face the brown, lay it flat. I have it on the corner again. Lay it flat towards your bunny feet or the belly. And remember to brush flat. So lay your brush flat. That way it can fade. We want it to fade for you. All right, now I'm going to just do a little bit here around the eggs. Again, this is optional. Just a little extra thing I like to add for detail. So I'm going to do just the top of my egg here. Back and forth with that brown on the corner. Just like that. Let it fade into your fence. There we go. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just to add some texture. All right, love it. I think we're about there, guys. Looks so good. Now, before we can paint our grass, our grass is the very last thing we do. We've got to add a highlight. So I'm going to rinse my brush. Really good again. You guys are getting so good at floating. We're gonna float some more, unless you want to, again, use a detail brush instead. Okay, but a highlight is just going to add a little bit of a sh lighter shade to bring out your feet, 
draw attention to it, brighten them up a little bit. See how I'm just brushing back and forth in a C shape, following that outside edge. So again, I'm putting white just on the corner and I'm gonna follow that outside edge back and forth. Just give it a little bit of a highlight there. All the way around. Cute. You can make it as bright as you want. Totally up to you on that one. Okay. I love highlighting, so I tend to do more than less. <laughs> All right. Okay, now we're going to add some to the top of um, our eggs here. Okay. So we're just going to come here to the top of our eggs. Brush that light. Make it look like that sunlight is just hitting the top of our eggs right there. Brushing back and forth, letting that light hit our eggs. Just adds so much light, you know? I love it. Okay. We'll add some to our purple egg and to our yellow just around the top make that yellow pop and of course we have this little corner egg can't forget that one perfect love it we are just about there Right. Now we have one more thing to highlight. We're going to come right up here to the top and go around that outside edge with some white, the outside edge of our the hole in our fence. I'm just going to follow that edge with a little bit of white to give it some pop. Really help this stand out a little more. Just going to go all the way around doesn't have to be a lot and you can definitely use your detail brush to do it. Okay, I'm just going to go around that edge. You do want to make sure your brush is not too wet and you want to make sure your black is dry before you go around that or you will lose your tail. It will happen. So just make sure it's dry. All right, you guys. I think we're on the home stre stretch. We are going to be painting our grass next. Make sure my tail is popping out there. I'm not getting lost in the black. Now our grass is so fun because you get to choose the color for the grass by mixing so I'm going to switch brushes I like to use this medium round brush it's my favorite one for grass okay and when I make mixed grass I like to take a little bit of my phthalo green which is really dark and mix it with my yellow that way I can start figuring out what shade I want and start with a little bit of phthalo and then we're going to add some white because that green just takes over. It is such a strong color that if you want it more limey and bright, you'll want to just use a tiny bit. Because it quickly takes over our painting. Now when we make grass, we want to keep in mind that it's not all supposed to look the same, right? Our grass can be different. I've never seen two, <laughs> two things of grass that are the same, right? And so we're going to start at the bottom and press with our brush. And as we come up, we lighten our pressure. That way we get a point. Okay, so you're going to start at the bottom, press, press, and then lighten your pressure as you come up. So we're going to press and lighten our pressure. And I'm going to try and go in different directions. So. My grass isn't all the same, right? We kind of want 
it to be different. Some short, some long, some curved, some not so curved. Okay, so I'm going to press and curve it out here on that one. And then I'm just going to connect a little one to it. There we go. It's like that. Okay. So to do our grass, remember to keep that pressure on the bottom. Press, come up, and lighten our pressure. Right? So press and lighten our pressure. Here we go. Now don't worry if you feel like you um, need another layer. <laughs> That's normal. This green is very transparent, so you definitely are going to need another layer in a minute. Okay, now here I'm just going to add a couple of little strands of grass. Okay, and here we're going to take one way over just to add, make it a little different, right? Press and go all the way over. Just adds a little something, and you know what? This is different every time I paint grass. It's never the same, you know? Ever. You never know what you're going to get. Okay, and then right here, I'm going to do one that just kind of floats over, falls over a little bit. And then we'll do a few that are curved the other way. There we go. Just filling it in. Always different every time. Okay, I think it's pretty good. Just about done. Okay. How we doing, guys? Hopefully everyone's having fun. Grass should be a lot of fun. It's very therapeutic. We have all kinds of strands going on. Now, you're going to add one more layer to your grass, okay? And this is kind of fun because I take my green here and then I dip the very tip of that brush that has green on it in white and then I start at the bottom and as I come up, that white just shades my grass. Isn't that pretty? I love doing grass. It's so fun because you can just be super free with your brush strokes. There's no right or wrong way here. Just try and keep your brush perfect. Brush. See, I told you guys I'd struggle with my words today. But you want to keep your grass perfectly imperfect. That is the way. You can fill it in, put a lot more than me, or you can do just a couple of strokes like I am. But I love it so much. It's so fun. Okay, I'm just going to fill in this one. Get a little white on that tip there for some shading. Now you can do a lot more white than me if you want. We saw artists doing all kinds today. Feel free to add. But it definitely gives it so much when you add it. All right. I think we're about there. Love it. Let's see. That one just taken off on me. Like I said, you never know. You don't know what they're going to do to you. That's so fun though. Look how cute. And again, totally imperfect, right? Exactly how it should be. All right, guys. I think we're about there. I hope you artists had a good time with me. And I hope you're having a happy Easter. Or maybe you're just painting this for fun because you love bunnies. And that makes me happy too. 
just going to add a little more white. I love the white in the grass. And I think we're done. Feel free to add more highlights. Get super creative. Don't forget to sign your name because as artists, we are just so proud of our work, right? So we're gonna take a minute and just sign our name. You can put your favorite symbol, your initials, whatever you want. But we hope that you had fun and we hope you will display this for everyone to see because you did a phenomenal job. I'm sure we would love to see it. If you want to share with us on social media, just tag us at My Little Paintbrush. And if you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Okay, now you can talk. <laughs>